Hey, thanks for joining me for this screencast today. And what I'd like to do is demonstrate how to set up validation within the web data grid using some of the editor providers. Now, to give you an idea of what we'll be building, here I have a grid on the page and it's just bound up to a simple data source. If I come into the first name here, I have a required field validator set up uh, for this field. So if I delete the value and try to hit enter or tab off or whatever, you'll see that I have this label here, first name is required. Okay, so we'll put that back. And that's the, the setup that I'm gonna show you that will work with all the standard validators. On top of that, I wanna show you how to also work with a custom validator. And let's say you have a piece of business logic that says, um, the last login date has to be earlier than today's date for some reason, okay? So we'll come in here and adjust this value and say that it's uh, April 3rd, 2010. And uh, right now it's in the February of 2010. And so it says that uh, today, this value must be earlier than today. So if I go back and switch this up, it fulfills the validation logic and uh, we can kind of go on from there. So there's a couple different pieces to the process here. So let's drop into Visual Studio and I'll show you how to get started. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008 and I just have a, a web data grid on the page. I've got a script manager and um, let's see, we're binding up to a collection of people and so that should be pretty basic. We're not gonna be doing anything else in code behind so this is the, the last time you'll, you'll need to look at this. But just know it's just uh, a pretty basic uh, data binding scenario at this point. So we've got our grid and again the script manager. So the first thing that we need to do is begin filling out some of the behaviors. So let's open up the smart tag. And the first thing I'd like to do is edit the grid editor providers. Now what I want is a text editor and also a date editor. So let's do the drop down here and we'll say uh, text editor provider. And I'll just change the ID to something a little shorter here. So we have our text editor and then also um, our date time editor provider. So we'll do that and do the same thing here, shorten it up just a little bit. So we have a date time editor. So what we'll do is we'll link our columns, these editors and the validation controls together within the behavior of our grid and so everything will work together seamlessly. So before we begin to uh, try to hook everything else up, let's go ahead and add in some validation controls to the page. So I'm gonna come down into the markup and right underneath the grid, I'm gonna paste in some code here and these are our validators. So we have a required field validator and I'm just calling this RFV first name. Um, we're gonna take a look at a CSS class in order to give it its look and feel. And I'm blanking out the four color because for some reason the, the validation controls come hard coded with a kind of a, a reddish color to them. And I wanna override that in the CSS but if you don't blank it out here, you can't override it. The text here is the text that we want to show up underneath the edit control. And the control to validate, this is kind of um, kind of a bypass here because we're just saying we're validating the grid. When in effect, we're really not validating the entire grid, we're validating a single input control that'll be in a single cell. But this allows uh, everything to work together nicely. Now the custom validator has the ID, the text, the CSS class, all the same things as the other one. Except this one, we have the client validation function. And basically this gives us an opportunity to tap into what's happening with the validation and evaluate some of our own logic. Now the logic that will run will look something like this. What happens is we'll look into the validation object and we'll call the infragistics uh, function here. So we'll do a find and say get date. Now this doesn't get the value out of the input control, but it uses the client side object model in order to format the date based off of the localization settings. So we're, we're getting the true date out of the control. Now I have question marks here because there's something special we have to do in order to get the ID and we'll do that in just a moment. So then we'll grab today's date and then we implement uh, whether or not the, the value is less than today and that's just our, our kind of sample uh, implementation here. So before we get to getting that ID, let's just fill out the rest of the ASPX here really quick by adding the style for our CSS class. So I'm gonna come back up to the top and we'll paste in this style here. And so it, simple stuff. We're giving the gray background, a darker gray border, giving it some padding, telling that we don't want the text to wrap inside the, the contents of the, the container. Um, we're giving it a dark red color, making it bold, and making it a margin of three, just so it's easy to see when it's close to the other elements on the page. 
So the big thing though is that we have our validators on the page. So we'll go into the smart tag and go into edit behaviors and the first first behavior we want to add on to this grid is activation. And this is so that the client events will fire on the grid as you're going around and changing the different um, um, rows and cells within the grid. Then we'll turn on the editing core and then also cell editing. Now the edit mode actions, we want to be able to enable it on key press. And again, this is so that we have an event to tap into when we're doing the validation and it's going to happen on the key press. So then we'll come over to column settings for cell editing here and let's add an item. Now this column settings is based on a key and so the key that we want to work off is the first name on our, our grid there. And then the editor, if you remember that we created those editors in the beginning, we have a text editor. And so the text editor is what best associates to the first name. And then we also want to associate a validator ID and so this will be the required field validator for the first name. So we'll apply that and then let's add one more item here. Come down to last login date, the editor ID will be the date time editor and the validator will be the custom validator for login date. Apply that, press OK, apply that and press OK. And now when we run the grid, we should get some interesting things beginning to happen. So here's our grid on the page. If we come up and blank out first name, there we have our validator firing. We get the message, add something back in there, check to make sure it works for all the different rows and sure enough it does. And so that's nice. So th we're, we're basically done, except there's one piece of the puzzle that we still have to fill in. And if you remember, I put question marks in for the ID for our custom validator. And that's because there's, there's no real easy way to figure out what the ID will be for that validation control. And so let me show you the way that we're going to accomplish that, this right now. Now I will give you a warning. What I'm about to do is, it's pretty brittle. As you add controls to the page, the ID that's generated for uh, this control will change. So, you know, you need to be careful about whether or not you choose to use this technique, but I want to show you how it can be done should you choose to do it. So we're going to view source in the page. And when we take a look at the source and scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you'll notice that we have uh, the Infragistix Web UI Web Text Editor. And we also have the Infragistix Web UI Web Date Editor. And so what we're interested in finding out is the ID for the Web Date Time Editor. And we can see from right here that it's WDGCT101. So we're gonna take that generated ID and plug it into our script in the page and so it knows where to find the control in order to get the value out of it. Again, as things change on your page, that ID may change. So testing is very important here. This is the best way to do it at this point, so I want to show you how it's done. Um, but just be aware, you need to make sure of, of what's happening. So let's run this once again and see if our custom validator will fire as well. So here we go, 2010, must be earlier than today. Works just fine. Verify it works all the way through. 2010, must be earlier than today. So that gives you the basics of working with validation within the web data grid. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.